And this fits right in with what Christianity Today stands for. Christianity Today is a very progressive Christian news outlet led by... Now, look at the background. Look at these candles. Look at this pulpit, if you will. You can see the background here. You just feel uneasy watching this. Hey, if you want to supercharge your health in a natural way, you need to check out Ion Lair. You can use the code BRYLAN to get $100 off your first order. Check out the link in the description below to see all the amazing benefits of Ion Lair. And yes, I personally use it and love it. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylan. Now, it's no secret that Beth Moore has been a walking red flag for years and years, yet somehow she is still hailed as one of the most prominent voices in Christianity today. And that is a terrifying thing, especially when you see the kinds of things that Beth Moore has been into, especially recently. Now in this video, I want to show you something that just happened at Beth Moore's home church. Now this should be shocking, but unfortunately it's not. And that's what's so scary about it. First, real quick, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4. Check this out. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. You're seeing this big time today in our culture. You're seeing people teach absolute heresy and be hailed as great Christian thinkers and speakers because they're teaching things that the flesh wants to hear because people hate the truth because the truth convicts. It confronts and it changes you. And we're falling for this lie, even within Christian culture, that we are good enough if we just look deep enough within us. There is already good inherently within us. Last verse, this is 2 Timothy chapter 2. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Satan has these kind of people in the palm of his hand. He leads them, and he guides them. You know, the Bible says that Satan comes as an angel of light. Now, Beth Moore is no stranger to controversy. If you'll remember her book, Praying God's Word, Breaking Free from Spiritual Strongholds, in this book, a couple of years ago, she removed the biblical definition of marriage. She removed references to LGB things so it wouldn't be so controversial. She took her book, which is about praying to God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the holy God, and removed truth from it so that it would appease to people's flesh easier. But, and then she also likes tweets. I feel stupid even saying that. She liked a tweet. But that's the reality of the culture we live in today. Beth Moore uh, was advocating a tweet that said, do not share the gospel during all the BLM riots and all that kind of stuff. You remember that back in 2020? There was a very progressive woman that said, do not treat the protests as a mission field. Do not go love on people or lead people in prayer. Do not go to be a Christian voice in the crowd or to share God's love or to witness to people. And Beth Moore is just like, yeah, that sounds good because the gospel won't fix anything, even though it's the only true answer to all of these issues. Don't share the actual answer. Just go help keep the problem going. Beth Moore was also very well known for being one of the biggest social justice warriors on earth for the last several years. 
And she wrote this tweet that insinuated that the SBC doesn't like people of color in powerful positions. You can see down here. She has zero evidence for this, but the reason why she was saying this was because she was mad at the SBC because she left the SBC because they wouldn't allow her to be a lead pastor. Even though she's never tried to be a lead pastor, doesn't want to be, but still mad. Now again, Beth Moore recently left the SBC and here's an article in Christianity Today. This is leading up to what happened at her church. This is an excerpt from her latest book. This article is titled, When I Was a Stranger in the SBC, Anglicans welcomed me. If you're unaware, Beth Moore left the SBC and joined the Anglican Church because they suited her passions. They tickled her ears more than the SBC did. Not that the SBC is always good in what they do. So this is an entire article in Christianity Today that you can go read, and it talks a little bit about what prompted uh, Beth Moore to join the Anglican Church. Now, this is much too long of an article to cover in this video, and this fits right in with what Christianity Today stands for. Christianity Today is a very progressive Christian news outlet led by Russell Moore, who is best friends with Beth Moore. They're, all, you're, they're always together. You're going to see them together a lot. They're like-minded in the fact that they are both extreme extreme social justice warriors and they literally want to appease the world more than God and it's very disturbing to see people like this hailed as Christian leaders in our culture today and really is a sign of where Christianity is at unfortunately and it's very sad to see but here is Beth Moore's church St. Timothy's Anglican Church and you can see that they have a lot of visuals like the Catholic Church. Why? Because they are essentially Catholic light, if you will. They have the same imagery. The Anglican Church was essentially split from the Catholic Church hundreds of years ago in order for the king to have more power over the church. So the king created the Anglican church essentially, but kept all the same type of Catholic structure. And you'll see that, you know, they have their father, Jimmy John, uh, that's not his name, but that's, you know, they, they have uh, the, it's the exact same structure as the Catholic church, but they're, they're not Catholic. Okay. Now this is where something extremely disturbing happens at Beth Moore's church. Now, I want to point something out to you real quick before I show you what's about to happen. Now, look at the background. Look at these candles. Look at this pulpit, if you will. Um, you can see the background here. Here is Beth Moore standing at that exact same pulpit. It's the exact same background, the same candles, everything. I just want to show you that this is Beth Moore's church. All right, let's check out what happened at Beth Moore's church. So my name is Kurt Nock, and I partner with Father Nazir in the uh, interfaith ministry that uh, we've been doing now for probably three years, at least he and I. He started long before I did. Okay, real quick, I know you're thinking, why'd you pause it already? I want you to notice what he just said, that... He is a part of the interfaith ministry. When you take a look at the title of this video, it says St. Timothy, blah, 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 interfaith dialogue. Now, what you're about to see is them attempt to bring many faiths together. So please join me in welcoming, welcoming uh, Iman Osman and Father Dearman. You know, the opportunity to stand before you here today is one that, for me, growing up in Houston really resembles or really exemplifies the idea that we as human beings ultimately have been sent on this earth to number one, empathize with one another. So I wanted to start tonight's discussion with a verse from the Holy Quran, and I wanted to recite it before each and every one of you today so that I could translate it and try to go through what it is that the Muslims find within God's capacity to forgive. God Almighty says in the Quran, قل يا عبادي الذين اسرفوا على انفسهم This is where Beth Moore has decided to place her faith 
inside of a Catholic light church that is inviting other faiths to come in and teach, this is exactly what it is to be a false teacher. You just feel uneasy watching this. In fact, 2 Timothy chapter 4, check this out. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Remember, this is exactly what Beth Moore talks about when she says, I was a stranger in the SBC. Anglicans welcomed me. Now, this isn't to say that the SBC is always good. They have their issues. But Beth Moore's reason for fighting against the SBC and leaving the SBC were very unbiblical reasons. And she decided to wander off and find a church that would suit her passions. Second Peter chapter 2 says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. God wins in the end. But we should be vigilant today to stand on truth and to call out those who are leading people to destruction, all in the name of being welcoming. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community, and please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people, and it would really help spread this message. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.